Welcome back to making a Rice Krispie Treat car tutorial by me, Elizabeth Merrick. We're on video two and I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome details on this car that we've so far made the body, covered it in fondant, and made the wheel wells, and uh, now we're going to make those really cool uh, tires that you see there with all of the intricate details and things that take forever but they look awesome. So as you can see we have our halfway finished car here with some of our exterior details and I'm going to show you how to make the wheels. I start off with the template that I printed off from before in video one and a uh, little toy that I found to use for the wheels as sort of a base and some amazing putty that I used to make a mold of that toy and that's kinda what I'm gonna use to start off with so I, I've had, you can watch some tutorials online on how to use Amazing Putty, but I'm not going to do it right now, but it's pretty simple. And I've got my black fondant that I'm going to roll up and get ready and just smush in there to get the basic shape going and to basically kind of see how much I have, like how much fondant is in here. It doesn't need, you don't need to worry about it getting squished at this point. I use a little scale to see that it's about 1.6 ounces and then I go ahead and make five of these little tires and I use quite a bit of Tylos inside because so, I'm going to let these dry overnight and I want them to be really hard. Helps if your Tylos comes out of the container easily. So I just dump some in there, just an arbitrary amount knead it in nice and good so that it will these wheels will harden up really good and we're gonna put a uh, spacer between the board and like the bottom of the cake board of the rice cereal treat car and uh, the, fl the table I guess you could say so that the weight of the rice crispy tr the weight of the car is not on top of the wheels, it's on the spacer, but it'll look like it's sitting up on wheels, which looks better. So I'm just really working that Tylos in there, putting it into the mold. And then pushing it out. And then we have a wheel. And then I'm going to roll these out a little bit just until that they reach the diameter of uh, the, the template that I have. I want to make sure that they're big enough. One of the main problems with some car cakes you'll see is that the uh, wheels are not big enough. And then I have just, I just went into my cake room and just looked around for a piece of plastic cutter something that had a hole in it that was about the size of the wheel well. This just happens to be a baby bottle lid and that kind of makes the indentation of where the um, the wheel is going to be inside the tire. And it's a, the same size as my template now so it's big enough. Looks good. I'm going to let that dry overnight so they're nice and hard. And then I'm going to basically add another layer of black fondant so that we can create the texture of the tread without smushing the tire. I'm, there might be other ways of doing this, but this is how I do it. So I just roll out the fondant thin, get it wet, trim off the excess. and then fold those edges over and clean them up so that they look good. 
And then I didn't show this, but I actually put another thin uh, layer around the edges. So that was nice and clean. And you're going to do that four more times so that you have five of them. This is a uh, fruit uh, protector piece, piece of plastic that, that you wrap around fruit so it doesn't get bruised. And I thought it would make a great texture for tread. So you just roll it on there and it makes tread. And then to make the uh, wheels, I rolled out long skinny pieces of gray fondant and just wove them onto the wheels back and forth, back and forth. You get the idea. There's a little gray piece in the center too that I didn't show you that I put on there. I didn't want it to be too tedious. I just wanted you to kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. You don't have to do all of this, but this is just what I did. And then I'm going to take another rope and wrap it all the way around the edge so it looks nice and clean. Use an X-Acto knife to trim off the part that you don't need. Clean that seam up. And then a little, I don't know what this piece, like a hubcap or something, I, I'm not for sure. I'm just going off of the picture. There's a little silver part in the center that I'm just recreating. The best way to get some really awesome realistic details is to not make it up. Don't make it up in your brain. Look at the photo. Really analyze all of the pieces that are on there. Break it down and add those to your, your project and it'll really make a big difference. All of those little tiny details really add up. So this is the, a little wing nut or something in the center. It looks nice. Just a little bit of water to glue everything together. And that's all finished. So this one is going to go on the side of the car. So I finished it I finished it and uh, I didn't do the other four. I actually added the details with the the tires on the cake because you have to place them over the, the sticks and then add all the details on top. So that's what I did. This is the spacer that you're going to use. It's just pieces of foam board glued together and glued to the bottom of the cake. And then you take your unfinished wheels, add them to the car. And just uh, put, up, put on the wheels and then just trim off the extra stick. Use water and a little bit of fondant to make sure they're glued on there well. And then I took little pieces of black fondant to make the wheel wells over the back. And I'm going to take another piece of green fondant and place it over the whole thing so that the uh, the uh, me the back of the car looks like it's curved around the, the tires. And I'm going to cut along that same cut that we made before when we put that layer of fondant on, making sure we know where our seams are and everything. So, you know, this this is kind of difficult. You have to use a really sharp X-Acto knife to really get it cut nicely, and then you have to really fuss with those edges to get them smooth, but just take your time and uh, be patient. Look at your photo a lot for reference. So 
I'm just cutting off the excess, trying to kind of feel where that bump is so that I'm cutting below it so you don't see any of it. It gives the illusion that the the wheel wells are curved up and over the uh, the wheel and since it's black you know you can't really see it. Make sure you smooth out that rough edge. You know that, that doesn't look good so we want no rough edges. Everything is smooth, everything looks nice. Without that black piece underneath, that would just fall, so that's important. Do the same thing to the other side. And then we want to trim off the piece that goes up around the inside of the car. Just follow along the seams that you had before, being careful and cleaning up. Okay, stay tuned for part three where we're going to do the interior and exterior details, putting in the steering wheel, all the dials, all the little chrome pieces, headlights, window shields, everything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.